Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is May Ann Thomas. I run our APP initiative here at NALU. First, I'd like to thank you all for joining us for our first micro webinar focused on NALU's SES patient profiles. I have Camilla Binks joining me tonight where we can dive in deep to some of the patients that will fit best with the NALU technology. Before we jump into the SES patient profiles, I'm gonna briefly review the NALU micro technology just to level set everybody. So we're all on the same page as we're thinking about the patients that can truly benefit from this therapy. Once Camilla jo joins us and tells us more about the NALU SES patient profiles, we will then have a Q&A session at the end. So for our micro webinar series, we will go no longer than 20 minutes, we promise this is a very focused approach to our webinars. We will keep it nice and concise for you, but if you do have questions during the presentation, please go ahead and put them in the Q&A and we'll make sure to answer them at the end. Thank you. So I wanna talk just a little bit about our micro IPG before handing it over to Camilla. I'm assuming everybody on the call has had experience with spinal cord stimulation and therefore has worked with both non-rechargeable IPGs and rechargeable, where that lithium ion battery is actually embedded with the IPG. The image to the left shows the average battery IPG that you might see in the marketplace today. So about 80% of those battery IPGs are the battery component. Right away, what our engineers did was they took out that 80%, which was the battery, and placed it into our external battery, which we call a therapy disc. This also can serve as a rudimentary remote. The other 20% of the system, you'll see that identified as the green computer board. That's the smarts of the battery IPG. Our engineers took this to the next step and micro-sized that technology into the chip you see right over to the right. They then encase these smart electronics, which are a true fully fledged IPG into a ceramic molding and then hermetically sealed our device. What this means to you and your patient is without that battery component being embedded with the IPG, there's nothing inside the system that will denigrate over time. So with that in mind, we actually have the longest longevity for a spinal cord stimulation system on the marketplace of 18 years. And with our device, we're expecting to get at least 18 years because the patient's not gonna have to switch it out sooner because of any kind of battery considerations. One more thing I wanna point out on this slide. So you'll see we've won several awards for our advancing in technology in the SES space. One in particular we're very proud of that I wanna point out. We did win the 2021 R&D 100 award I personally had never heard of this award before, but we dug in a little bit deeper when we were identified here. So you might think of quantum computers that have won this prestigious award, satellites that are floating in space right now. So we like the company we're keeping there. Um, so something we're super proud of, wanted to share that. Obviously, I just mentioned the IPG. We also have eight contact spinal cord stimulator percutaneous leads that go along with our SES system as well. I promise I'm not gonna dive in deep to waveforms. I want everybody on this call to feel really confident and comfortable with the capabilities that our system has. We can do anything in the marketplace today that's not patent prohibited. And we also have our own novel waveform among other novel, just specific to NALU advancements. One other one I wanna uh, point out is our ultra long pulse width of 2000 microseconds. We're not really sure what this can do for our patients, but we're really excited about trying it in both spinal cord stimulation and peripheral nerve stimulation. And then we do have our pulse stimulation pattern waveform. That's a multi-layered waveform that works on multiple mechanisms of action. If that's something you're interested with, please follow up with us. We have some really nice data that supports that pain relief we can achieve with that waveform. This just gives you a visual of what the system will look internally. We have those two leads in the epidural space, usually T8, T9, and then the micro IPG to the left or the right lower flank. And then these are our two external components. So we have that external battery, lithium ion battery, right? Therapy disc. This is held in place with our medical grade adhesive. We use a hydrocolloid medical grade adhesive, just like in the ostomy space. And it holds that therapy disc right over on top of that implanted IPG. 
to make sure that we are able to provide the patient with the most efficient therapy. And that's all the product guys, I promise. All right, I'm gonna bring Camilla on now. She's going to walk us through some SES patient profiles you can start thinking about for NALU. Camilla, take it away. Hey, man. Hey, everybody on the call. It's nice to have you join us on a Thursday um, afternoon after a busy day of clinic. Um, I had one as well. Um, my name is Camilla Binks, and I am a nurse practitioner with Arizona Pain in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, I've been in pain management for about eight years, um, pain and orthopedic experience as well. And we started using NALU in our clinic about two, two and a half years ago, probably now, um, and utilizing NALU for both PNS and SES. Um, so I'm going to delve into just a few of those specific um, SES patients that, that we consider. So this slide goes over um, different patients that really come to mind when, when I'm considering NALU for the spinal cord stimulator um, as an option for the patient. And while we're not going to dive in deep to each one of these patients, I just want you to think about um, maybe some of the younger or older patients in your clinic, those with low BMI or high BMI, um, patients that maybe they are adverse to having a battery implanted, um, those patients that they don't want to have a lot of high maintenance with their system, um, any kind of surgical uh complicated patient, um, you know, those with diabetes and slow wound healing are also definitely a candidate for the system. And then the episodic pain patient, those that maybe they don't have pain every single day and, you know, their pain comes and goes with, with their activity. So with that, we're going to talk uh, more specifically about two of these categories. So patient size, um, these are the patients, when I think of NALU, I think of those that are, are really petite or tiny. Um, again, it's not really going to mention it on this next slide, but those that are maybe overweight as well. So these patients, maybe they're coming to you, they're a candidate for spinal cord stimulation, and they're really thin or frail. Maybe they have thin skin, um, and they're worried about the, the battery sticking out. So the NALU SES, the, the implanted IPG is a micro IPG. And I, if you've ever seen the device, which hopefully you have, it's, it's very small compared to a normal implantable IPG with a battery. The, um, the way I coin the phrase is it's no bigger than, the, than my pinky finger. It's 96% smaller than conventional IPGs. And there's minimal tissue displacement um, and, and the bulge or pocket pain um, with a traditional um, spinal cord stimulator battery. And the procedure is, is much different in terms of pocket uh, placement. So, you know, traditional IPGs have, a, have a, a wide incision. The physician has to create a pocket to place the IPG. And while we still have to create a pocket to place this IPG, it's very small and really rests under the skin. So think about those patients in your clinic that maybe they have a very low BMI or a high BMI, and um, we always encourage our patients to lose weight. So the concern for a larger patient um, with a traditional battery is that if they lose weight, they might have to go in for a pocket revision because that battery will move. And it's uh, mu much, much more much less likely with the micro IPG than it is with a traditional uh, IPG. All right, the next patient we're going to talk about is um, the the very young patient. So, as Mayan man mentioned, um, the Nalu IPG is um, patented for eighteen years, maybe longer even. Um, so, those patients that are that are younger think about how many times in their lifetime they would have to go in for a battery replacement. With the NALU device, um, we're, sh we're lengthening that time <clears throat> between IPG replacement. Um, if if the, the battery components are outside of the body, they might have to replace the therapy disc or the external battery more frequently, but what's actually implanted in the patient will be less frequent. Um, the external wearable battery 
is, is a replacement change for the battery, but never an additional surgery. And any system upgrades happen with the external therapy disc, not with the internal components. <clears throat> um, I'm just going to share a story as I, as I do. Um, I had a patient, uh, Emma, she's 21, and she came into the clinic as a new patient. And she had had frequent multiple surgeries to both of her feet for a, a deformity, unfortunately, that she was born with. And at the age of 15 was diagnosed with uh, CRPS and had been through the gamut as far as pain um, interventions and came to me as a new patient at 21. So six years she'd been dealing with this uh, CRPS. And as I'm looking through everything, that she'd already been through. I thought she really needs a spinal cord stimulator. Like this, that's what she really needs. So as I approached her about it and asked if anybody in the past had talked about spinal cord stimulation, she said, yes, but I don't want an implantable battery. And I realized that if I have a battery, I'm going to have to go on for surgery every five to 10 years. So I talked to her about the Nalu system and she said, that's, that's something I can do. That's something I could live with. So we did the trial, she got excellent relief with the trial. And I was, as I was pulling out the leads in clinic, she, she was crying and she said, this is the first time in my life. I haven't had pain. Um, subsequently she was implanted and she's been, um, she's had her permanent system now for eight or nine months and came into the clinic about a month ago. And she said, I don't need anything. She'd come off of all of her meds except for duloxetine. And she said, I just wanted to tell you that I'm, I'm doing really well. Um, so with that being said, if, the, if there's a patient in your clinic that is younger and I consider younger to be, I don't know, 60 or less, um, consider NALU for that patient because their, um, longevity of the system will last much longer than a traditional IPG. I love that story. It was, it was finally she got offered the right therapy that will help her with her pain, something that she was yeah. willing to move forward. Thank and you so much for sharing you're that. You're welcome. Yeah. And, she, and she was very thin too. I didn't mention that, but she was very thin too. She's so both. it was <laughs> both killed two birds time. with one stone. Yeah, I know. And I'm, I'm sure everybody on the call has patients like that, that they can think of. And I've had experience with doing rechargeable, non-rechargeable battery IPGs. And there were always those times when I just, patient did so well with trial, but you just didn't know where that, you know, there just wasn't enough tissue to, to place right, that battery right. IPG someplace comfortable. So at least right, there's right. another option now that you yes. can offer for patients, which I absolutely. Really so I'm going to steal Camilla from you guys for just a couple more minutes, and then we're going to open up to Q&A. But Camilla, I'd love for you to share your story. So we're throwing a, a, a curveball at everybody with SES now because we've had rechargeable, we've had non-rechargeable, and now we have this new offer, you know, opportunity for patients with this external battery. So how did you bring this into your practice? Do you have any tips or tricks for folks on the call? Because everybody's got their patient talk tracks down, right? Everybody's got their right. rhythms. Right. What was the best way that you found to bring in a new therapy like this? So one of the things I always like to do with my patient is to involve them in, in the process, right? So having the conversation with the patient about why they need spinal cord stimulation is one conversation, right? Having the conversation with them about which system works best with their life. I don't know that, right? The patient knows that better than I do. So being able to, to approach the patient with the fact that there's different systems on the market. Some are implantable, non-rechargeable systems. Some are implantable, rechargeable systems. And then there's an external option. And just giving the patient the opportunity to, to consider each option and then decide which one really works best with their life. Um, I feel like it it involves the patient in their plan of care and it avoids unnecessary explant if the patient is unsatisfied, right? If I was to make that decision for every single patient, I can't imagine how many patients would come in and say, well, I didn't know it was going to be like this. So that's one of the things that I've, I've done um, with my own patients is just involve them in their plan of care. So are you now... I know you've kind of evolved over time. So in the beginning, would you offer up NALU if the patient's already said no to, to a battery yes. IPG? And absolutely. 
it sounds like now you're offering it to to everybody to figure out kind of where it fits. But did you have right. to build that comfort level, which I think is natural, right? Anytime you bring in something new. Right. And and there are those patients that maybe five years ago they were offered spinal cord stimulation and they don't want an implantable battery that now they have this option to then bring up that conversation again and offer this new therapy, I think is a good, it's a good thing. That's a great point. Cause if they say to no to SCS, they're most likely going to say no to a pain pump. Right. And right. Right. Not a lot of other options out there. Well, great. Thank you, Camilla. All right. You're welcome. I will now open it up. Other Q and A does anybody on the call that has joined us, anybody have any questions for Camilla, anything specific to SCS? Looks like we have a few in the queue, so I'll start, but, but we probably have a few minutes for a couple of extras, so feel free to type anything up. So one of our first questions is regarding recovery time. So with the NALU micro IPG, have you seen any difference in recovery time for those patients? Or do you, when you're educating the patient, do you still use the same talk track that you normally do with the battery IPGs? So I actually had a patient earlier today. She was implanted a week ago um, and I saw her today. I saw her three days post-op and then again today. And as I'm removing the dressings, she said, do I have to come back in a week for the staples to come out? And I said, no, there's no staples. It's just uh, such a tiny incision. It's just surgical glue. And her next question, of course, was, can I shower? Yes, of course you can shower. Everything's closed. Like, so in within a week, those tiny incisions have already been closed and they're healed. So I feel like traditional IPG implant, there's that large pocket. It usually takes much longer to heal and really get the patient feeling better. Um, as far as educating the patient, I tell, I still tell them to be cautious and careful and everything else. But as far as the incision healing time is, is much quicker with, with the NALU little tiny incision than it is with the traditional Okay, great. Thank you for that. We have a few more popping up here. Okay. Um, so tell us a little bit about insurance. I know everybody's always, um, it, that's always, you know, lack of clarity. So have you run into any insurance issues with NALU SCS? Um, the follow-up question is, does NALU have prior auth services? We do. Please contact your local rep and they will get you all situated there. But Camilla, tell us your experience with insurance coverage. Any issues? So I haven't had any denials um, or insurance issues with NALU SES. Uh, the PNS world is a little bit different than the SES world, but I feel like as long as you have the right diagnosis and the right code associated with, with uh, the request, then it's, it's getting approved. Um, the same codes for NALU are the same codes you would use with, with any other company as far as getting SES approved. Yep. And to your point, it's, it's a true IPG, you know, it's, FDA has said we're an IPG, right? So true IPG leads the same components to the other systems, just that battery has been removed, but the battery right. piece doesn't relate to the coding. Right. Very good. Um, so it also asks, we have a question here about MRIs with SCS. Um, it looks like I seem to have issues and end up changing the imaging to CT scans. Do you, do you want to speak to MRI? And then I can also follow up as well. I think you know more than I do, ma'am. But... I do. <laughs> um, so as you all know, with all the different neuromodulation companies out there, it's always conditional for MRI. So NALU is a uh, full body for SCS. Um, that's obviously, that's with our 40 centimeter leads. There are conditions to do can provide that to the MRI centers. As at the moment, we're just head and extremities only. Um, so we don't do full body with, with uh, PNS at this point. Let's see if there's, um, oh, we have a great question to help wrap up our call, asking if there's any upcoming cadaver labs or additional trainings. So let me move to our final slide of the evening. So I promise no more than 20 minutes, right, everyone? <laughs> So this is uh, an invitation to join our NALU Academy for both APPs and physicians. If you take out your phone real quick, you can scan that QR code and it'll take you to a form where you can sign up for our email list. We will then be able to email you about any upcoming events, including additional micro webinars. So this was our first micro webinar. Our next one is gonna be about identifying that PNS shoulder patient. We're gonna have some case series. We're gonna have more SDS converse conversations. We'll have Camilla back again this year. 
But thank you all again for joining us this evening. Camilla, thank you so much. It's always thank a pleasure you. to have you always. work with people. And that's it. 20 minutes, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you again. Have a good evening.